Hello everyone, welcome back. This is part two of video number three of the series. Um, as you may remember, last video we made a Suzanne here, but it was rendering black. Um, and I didn't point this out, but no matter what, it would always just face the one direction. We had no option to control which way it was pointing. And um, yeah, bounding boxes were kind of out of control, honestly. I had no idea what I was doing. So took some time and I figured it out. So let's jump right into it. Just these two heads up real quick here. So first things first, let's light the mesh. We're going to jump right back into our note here. And we are going to add a param type equals light. And you're going, what in the world is a param type? It's the parameter of the node. And you have two options. Either none, which obviously means nothing, or light. Now light evidently is all figured out by the engine because you don't actually define anything. But if you don't put that in, yeah, you get a black mesh. Oddly enough... Our tan blacks work just fine without it. So it seems to be a mesh only thing. Whoa. It seems to be a mesh only. Ah. A mesh only thing. So. Let's continue on with our merges again. Did I not save? Oh, I hate it when I don't do that. Always make sure you save before you launch the game up. Fortunately, there's not much to this one, so it loads pretty quick. Always make sure you save. All right, now let's throw this out. Ta-da! It honestly doesn't look too great. Let's dig a hole so we can get up a little closer. That mesh looks terrible on it. It almost looks like it's a galvanized metal instead of a cobble. That's because I did a quick, dirty unwrapping job. Okay, now it's lit. Let's make it so we can make it point in certain directions. That's going to be parameter type 2, which gives you a couple options. Um... Actually, only two. Wall mounted, which you would use for like torch type objects. And the other is face dir, which is the face's direction. So that is important for if you want the node to change depending on which direction you're facing when you point it. Or if you want to use like the screwdriver to rotate it. So now we hit play. And this monkey. He Suzanne is going to be the exact same way it was all along, but this one... Oh, hey, it's facing away from us. Well, okay. Let's try again. Still facing away from us. Okay. So that means it's probably backwards in the mesh file. So let's pull Blender back up here. Close that. All this camera stuff doesn't even matter. We are going to tab into edit mode. And then we want to scale, but we only want to scale on the Y, so we'll hit Y, and then we'll do negative 1, which will pretty much just flip this around for us on the Y. Shift and number 2, whoops, to pull both layers back up, and then we'll scoot Suzanne back towards the center there, and then we are going to export once more as an OBJ, leaving files, options as they were before. Just overwrite it. Export. Finished. Let's play. Let's see what happens with the new exported mesh. Just harvest Suzanne here. Harvest this one. And hey, hey, it's looking at us. Hey, it's looking at us. Okay, so now we have these little Suzanne heads. Now, I have no idea why you would want these in your world. <laughs> Honestly, unless you were doing it as like a trophy or something, but just as an example to show what you can do. You can get a lot higher poly too. This is a pretty low resolution mesh. You can go super high if you want. It's just going to slow down the game, but it usually runs pretty good. Okay, so we got that done. Let's get that bounding box. Selection box, rather. Figured out. So we do selection box, square brace. Type is fixed. You only have a few options. Options being, oh, 
that up real quick. Uh, regular, which is just the cube where you wouldn't put any sizes in. Fixed, where you do all those numbers like you saw. And then you have wall mounted, which you pretty much get wall top, wall bottom, and wall side. And then on all three of those, you put in the selection boxes too. So we have our selection box. That should actually be indented here. Whoops. Should be indented. It doesn't have to be. It'll run just fine without, but it looks nicer. Easier for readability if it is. Okay, and then square brace again. It's not giving me another because I already have another. And we are going to do negative 0.5. That is the right side of the selection box. Negative 0.5. That is for the bottom. You should probably always leave it at negative 0.5 because your selection box is going to be floating in the air, which I don't think you would really want, but if you did want, that would be how to do it. And then that is the back, the negative 0.3. And then we are doing 0.5, and that is the left side. And we're doing 0.15. That's the top. And then finally, we are doing a 0.4. And that is for the front side of the mesh. And I will put a comment in here, which is two dashes. And then I will just, I figured this all out and wrote it out on my notes. So I'm just going to put it here. I know it doesn't do you any good unless you freeze frame this. You can just take a snapshot because I'm not releasing this code anywhere. I probably should. Maybe I'll just throw it up on my blog or something. I don't know. If you want me to give you the code, just let me know in the comments and I'll throw it up someplace and then link it. As I said last week, this is just a short thing. We're going to be starting on that survival mod soon. And that'll all be up on GitHub, so you'll be able to just grab it off from right there. So that should all be right. Let's save this. Let's hit play. And let's see. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, uh, Suzanne's snout is kind of sticking out. And I'm still colliding into that outer box. As you'll notice, I'm not catching on a corner here, which I should, because there's a definite difference there. So, the question then becomes, what's going on? Well, I'll tell you what's going on. It's because that's just a selection box. There is a different type of box, which would be the uh but that uh collision box which you know what we would just use the exact same thing so we'll add that in right now and then we will do collision box now theoretically we could define this whole thing elsewhere and then just link to that definition but eh, i don't really feel like the we can just copy and paste it Save it. Run the game. I've never tried this before, so I'm hoping this all works. Hey, hey, we can catch ourselves in a little corner now. Now, interestingly, we can jump on top of that, and that gives us a little, uh, a little step type thing. It's not as high as a full node, so if we just throw a piece of dirt behind this, and we hop up on top of that. We can walk up to the dirt because you can walk a step of 0.5. So you could define a stair out of meshes and make it so you could walk it over. The collision box does not have to be the same as the selection box. You don't see the collision box. So I could make it where it's kind of a domed type thing. It would take a lot more numbers. But I could where you could actually just walk right over that instead of having to jump to get up it, but not going to worry about that right at the moment. So, I think that gets what we needed. Um, yeah, that should be it. We put our recipe in there already. Kind of went over a few more of these. Yeah, so I will, um, I will link up the the selection box and collision box information, and I'll actually, I'll even give you the, uh, 
mindtest.register underscore node page on the wiki too in the description. So you can check into that, read it out to find out more information on everything. There's a lot of stuff we can do. We'll be looking at some more of it next week. Let me know if you're interested in any more blender tutorials or texture tutorials. If you want me to do a little more on UV unwrapping, I can definitely do that. I'm just not sure how much interest there really is. So I don't want to create content if no one's going to end up watching it anyways. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments and I'll be back again next week. Thanks for watching and let's keep making mind test awesome. Totally just did a fist pump there.